grasshopper plane takes off on Bougainville in the South Pacific for a liaison mission against the Japanese who still hold part of the island. Fighting on difficult terrain, the American ground forces are greatly aided by these light, maneuverable planes that can fly at treetop height and at very low speed. Japanese positions are sighted. The plane radios the ground forces and artillery is brought into firing position. With enemy resistance softened by the bombardment, United States Fiji scouts land near the Java River. The grasshopper flies overhead as our forces progress toward a cleanup of the isolated but still resistant Japanese on Bougainville. From the New York State Capitol, Governor Thomas E. Dewey, Republican candidate for president, speaks of the liberation of Paris, one of many expressions of American opinion in which President Roosevelt and other national leaders joined. The liberation of Paris means the beginning of the end of Nazi domination of Europe. Let this inspiring event underscore the warning to Germany and Japan that every day they delay surrender, the consequences to them will be that much more severe. The uprising of the people of Paris themselves to throw off the yoke of slavery will serve as an inspiration to the millions of others still living under Nazi domination in Europe. That uprising was made possible because Allied arms had come to the outskirts of the city and stood as a mighty force to bolster the liberation of Paris. Now, we must not relax for one minute in our all-out war effort until Germany and Japan are so utterly defeated that their people shall vow never again. Weeks after D-Day on the beaches of Normandy, with the Wehrmacht reeling back from swift allied blows that struck in all directions in western France, a mighty new force, poised for a landing in southern France, assembles in the Mediterranean. Here at Naples, part of the vast armada of a thousand warships, transports, and landing craft of all kinds is made ready. Massed for loading are thousands of trucks, tanks, mobile cannon, military vehicles and equipment, stretching acre upon acre in the embarkation area. move up to their ships. Under Mediterranean commander Sir Henry Maitland Wilson and expeditionary leader Lieutenant General Alexander Patch, American, French, British, Greek, and Polish forces take part. The convoy is underway. Aboard the flagship is Secretary of the Navy Forrestal, accompanied by General Patch, French Admiral Le Meunier, and United States Vice Admiral Hewitt, Chief of the Invasion Fleet. The Allies plan to strike along a hundred miles of the French coast to cut off the great ports of Marseille and Toulon and to join with Eisenhower's forces from the north. In the air, spearheading the operations, hundreds of transports carry paratroop forces, ready to drop from the sky to secure road junctions and bridges behind the Riviera beachhead. Inside the planes, it's time to get ready. Down 
come the paratroops. The skies blossom with hundreds of chutes. Previously, 14,000 Allied airmen in 4,000 individual flights in a single day had helped clear the way for attack. Gliders have landed too, and the airborne troops now join together on the ground. Near the town of Lemuy, the paratroops move up to seize their objective. Bypassing German defenses, they have landed atop steep cliffs outside the town and start the descent to surprise the enemy from the rear, while simultaneously offshore, the Navy opens up. German shore batteries answer. Fire continues, the troops hit the beach. Immediately after landing, advance groups push inland striking through the valleys and foothills of the Maritime Alps and fanning out east and west. Two days' objectives are taken on the first day. In less than three days, this southern part of the French front is well established. Grenade rifles in action. Tanks blast a pillbox. The Nazi gun crew surrenders. of the FFI, French Forces of the Interior, make contact with the Allies in growing numbers. Citizens of the town of Fréjus come out to welcome the forces of liberation. Scores of towns and cities whose German garrisons have faced the double sword of fighting French resistance and oncoming Allied arms have now fallen. The Allies round out their master plan for the liberation of France and the crushing of the German enemy in the West. <laughs> 